All right, so the first question, so this is the practice set. Uh, if you're still looking, that's page seven. Okay. The first question is related to the table, and that's the, the trickiest part, I think. And so uh, the, when you get to equations, you know, that may seem easier. But the reality is you're probably going to want to use a table approach once you get a sense of how it works, once you get a good feel for it. You're going to want to use a table approach even for the equation cases, the ones where they don't give you a table, all right? And which is kind of hard to reconcile with because if you don't like this, then to think how you would intentionally want to use it later on, it's just like, it's, it's, it sounds absurd, all right? But anyway, the formula drives how we focus on the table. So they're asking us for h prime of three. So let's take a look just at the function itself. I, I copied and pasted the formula in here so I could have something to match it up with. So that's not in your handout. In fact, I'll take that as a typo if somebody wants to submit that for bonus. Because it, it'd be nice to have it in the actual handout. All right, so h, it's saying find h prime of three. Okay, so if I'm working off of this, before I find h prime of three, I might be looking at h of three in general which would correspond to the inverse of the f function at three, All right? But since I'm looking for the prime, I'd make that little maneuver. I would take the derivative of both sides. Just notation-wise, I'm not actually taking the derivative. The reason I'm doing this is so that we could see that regardless of the slight variation in notation, the right-hand side of this equation here corresponds with my rule, all right? And so that rule itself corresponds to a one over, there it is, a letter, I'm having a stroke, uh, F prime of the inverse of F at three. All right, so the h prime of three corresponded to this, which goes back to our rule, which gives us the right hand side, all right? Now, that's the big challenge, because if you look at this, and this is all gibberish, and it, at, at first glance it is, I mean, to anybody it would be gibber, gibberish because it's nonsensical, uh, then, then you're at a loss, but if you can decode what it's really trying to say, then everything will start to fall into place. So inside out, order of operations. We always work within the parentheses, nothing, nothing changes. So I would need to figure out the inverse of f at three. All right, that would give me some answer. I don't know what it is yet, we'll find it out in a minute. But once I get that answer, I would plug that into my derivative Uh, put a little box there to represent that. And then that would give me some answer. And that answer itself would correspond to my denominator. All right. So just continuing with my little box theme here. That would give me, oh, I already used red. I know, I know, I know. If you started writing it in red, that's a problem. But I'm switching it up. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go orange for those keeping score at home that result is going to correspond with the bottom of the fraction in my rule. All right, that's all well and good. If you can't figure out what all this stuff is, then it's not all well and good, I guess. So how do we figure it out? Well, this is the key to everything, because once you get this, everything else is going to fall into place. What this is again saying, when we're talking about the inverse function at x, it's saying the x value in an inverse equation or an inverse function. The x value in an inverse function is the same thing as the y value in the ordinary function. All right, so that's something that, it, I mean, say it three times to yourself, you know. You have x is to the inverse as y is to the function, all right? 
So x takes the role in the inverse, the same role as y takes in the original function. That's going to answer everything for us. Because once we go to the table, I mean, there's a lot of hand waving when it comes to the table. And unfortunately, some extraneous information, but that's part of the fun. If I only gave you the relevant pieces of information, you can get the answer just by guessing. And I wouldn't know that you actually knew any, anything about the content. Right? So I throw in some extra fluff here. But what I'm saying here is, in my function f, so let me ignore g. G is irrelevant completely. So only focusing on the F stuff. I have an X. I have a Y that goes with it, because F is F of X, which is replaced with a Y. And the F prime is the same as the derivative. So that would be F prime of X, dy dx. You can say Y prime if you want. All right. So again, they're telling me that the x value in inverse world is 3. So that's telling me that the y value in the real world is 3. And how do you know the x value in the inverse world is 3? Because they're defining it as the inverse function of x, mm -hmm. and then they're telling us that that x value is 3. All right, so h of x corresponds with f as an inverse of x, and then they say that it's at 3 indicating that the x value must be 3. All right. So in the real world, we have a y value of 3. What I would want to do is figure out, just for this piece here, the x value that that corresponds with. Oh, that should be red. Sorry. I know. I know. All right. All right, the x value that that corresponds to is what? Two. two. So the two goes in here and then here, okay? Now, I'm looking for the derivative at the x value of two, one. which would be one. So that goes here and here. So our answer, big old uno. That's related to the formula. So once we get to here, the inverse of f at, in this case, 3, has a result equal to 2. So now it's f prime of that answer, which is 2. All right. So the next problem is going to have the same structure. We're doing the same stuff. So if you define it the same way, you know, F, G, all that stuff, it'll all work out. It's just, in this case, you're looking at a function that's not invertible, right? If you try, you switch the X with the Y and solve for Y, you're not going to be able to, you're not going to be able to do it. Right? It's, it's something, it's, it's a term, it's a function that is either invertible or not invertible. This is something that you would not be able to find the inverse of. Bless you. So we would be reliant on this formula and the algebra that goes along with it if we didn't have a calculator to work with. But fortunately, we do have a calculator to work with. So what we can do for that question is basically manufacture the table approach. So x to the fifth plus 3x minus 2. You just have to make sure your y1 and your y4 are both on. All right. Because again, we're looking for the same stuff. So let me. Can I do that? I, I haven't tried this in a while. Oh, it's all grouped now. Uh -oh. Yeah, I know. 
in quite a pickle here. I like pickles. Let me do that. Oh, that's, a, oh, oh, hello. Which one did I just select? This icon? Oh, look at that. Oh, undo, undo, undo. As long as they still have lightsaber pointers, I'll be fine. <laughs> a little things in life. Now this one, this one's a little bit nicer because it it corresponds directly with the um, the, the question that's being asked. I don't have to think about any background stuff. So G as an inverse prime of two. F as an inverse prime of C, so we can we can match it up perfectly, and then go from there. It does not rely on the table, or at least the table that they pre, uh, they presented. We'd have our own table. So we're looking at. All right, so we have to figure out what this guy is. All right, so that is, and I'm, I'll show the progression slightly differently, but it'll essentially amount to the same thing. All right, so I'm figuring out what this one is. All right, so again, x is to the inverse function as y is to the real function or the or, uh, original function. So this is an x value in inverse world, which means it's a y value in the real world. So I'm gonna go to my table and lose all momentum. <laughs> Look, I can't see. Yeah, sure. Give me the end of the tree. Upstairs. They wouldn't say why. I'm sure it's for good, good reasons. Yeah, upstairs has like cell phones. <laughs> All right, so the, the x value in inverse world corresponded to the y value in the real world. What this is asking me for is the x value that goes along with that y value, which in this case, it, so it's basically the table approach, except I'm using the table in my calculator rather than a printed one. So that's telling me one. Now, if you don't have to show work, and you won't, there's a lot of fluff that you can cut out of this because if my next step is to figure out the derivative at one, then I'm kicking right over to y4 and it'll give me the eight on the bottom. So this guy here corresponds with an eight and so the result is one over eight, all right? So really when you think about it, you come across a question like this if you're, if you're just looking for an approach that'll get you the answer, find this number in Y1, find the corresponding Y4, flip it, call it a day. Question? Um, I'm not sure why, but all my Y4 values are 4.9025. Yeah. 4.9025. Yeah, something's typed in incorrectly. I'm just trying to think, because that's constant. I'll also, take a look at it. My 